Hello everybody, Interi Terry back again with another video. Oh boy, oh boy, before I will preview this Rome Master 1000 final 2020 between Novak Djokovic versus Diego Schwartzman. Diego is having his week of his life in his tennis career so far. Man, what a match we saw just recently between Diego Schwartzman versus Denis Shapovalov. My God, what a drama. This match reminded me so much about the US Open final just one week ago. It was up and down, a roller coaster. Both of the players have the, had the chances, mostly Dennis, to be quite honest, especially in that third set when he was searching for the final spot in that 5-4 game. And Dennis was up in, the up in the lead three times, but just couldn't hold the game together and just couldn't finish that, cr that finish line. He couldn't cross that finish line. Because Diego was just fighting and fighting and fighting. He was a warrior. Of course, this match could have gone either way when it comes to tennis. When, when two players go toe-to-toe -to -toe like these two did, the winner, the different who will win and who will lose are just this slim, guys. This slim. And of course, it was this slim. Diego won the first set, 6-4. He had the best start of the match. And then, of, then Dennis, he, he came back and, even, and won the second set with 7-5. And then had the best start in the third set. He, was, he, did, he did the first break. And then Diego break back, then Dennis, he, he break for the second time. Diego break back again. And then Dennis break for the third time and was serving for the match in the 5-4 game. But Diego, Dennis was just... Guys, these young stars, Dennis, Zverev, they are not... Ha they are tremendous good tennis players. And the best of all that I'm being mostly impressed of all. Yeah, we know that Zverev has most titles. He has much more titles than, than uh, Dennis. Uh, Zverev has won 11 titles, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, so far in, during his career. And Dennis has only won one, and a small one, the Stockholm Open last year. And Zverev has won four big titles, three Masters and one um, uh, London, uh, that Autopitool finance title in London in 2018. But man, Dennis impre is impressing on me. Shh, man, he has everything. He has huge firepower. He's a big shot maker, guys. He has a bright future. To compare Dennis now and to compare him what he was one year ago, this time around, he's a much better player. Really, he has... He has improved so he 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 used to have really horrible returns. His returns are still not superior, but he, they are they are much better than last year. He's not doing as much unforced errors like he did one year ago. He's still doing a little too many unforced errors. I believe he landed. How many unforced errors did he do tonight? I believe he did. Uh, 58 unforced errors, if I'm not mistaken. That is little too much. Uh, yeah, 58 unforced errors. Uh, that is, that is little, little too many, but he's, he's firing a lot of winners. He did 49 winners. That is a lot of winners. So he's still doing little too many unforced errors. He, he, has, he did nine more unforced errors than winners. Yeah, nine more. But, it's, but it is... He's playing good. He's hitting the ball really hard. I'm loving his backhand. Man, he has a great backhand. Uh, Denis Shapovalov. Yes, his, huge, his big Arsenal shot is his forehand. It is not his backhand. But he's, he has a solid backhand. He doesn't slice it a la Grigor, a la Federer, a la team. And he's young. He's only 20, 21 years old. He has the time on his side. He will be even better. Just think about how, how Denis will be 
this time around in 2021. Just think about it. One year ago in 2019, he was not as good as he is in 2020. Just imagine how he will be in 2021. He will be even better. He will be even sharper. He will be even more consistent. He he's already consistent. He did a great tournament in Cincinnati. He did a great tournament in in US Open. He was only one set away of playing a semifinal in US Open against PCB when he when he he when PCB take, took him down in in that fifth set battle. And he was only for God's sakes only one or two points away of playing his first ever Master 2000 final. Uh, in his career, or I, I believe he has played a, a Master Final. I believe he has played the Master Thousand Final before uh, in uh, Paris last year, if I'm not mistaken, against jo against Djokovic, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I believe I, I believe so. So, man, that that he was only one or two points away, for God's sakes, uh, uh, to win this match. Uh, Diego, man, Diego, what a warrior. Uh, you have to be impressed from Diego. What a warrior, Diego Schwartzman. My God, after doing a, his match of his life against Rafael Nadal last night, what a match. He, he, he didn't do as good of a match to, tonight. Absolutely not. Uh, uh, because De uh, Shapovalov, he, he's, Diego Schwartzman will not get the same kind of balls against Shapo like he get like he got against Rafa because Rafa has a bigger top spin than Shapo. Shapo has fl much flatter shots. So D Diego will never have the time to load his to unleash his ground strokes like to like a player like a, a like a player like a, uh Shapo will give Shapo will give him much flatter shots what Rafa did. So I'm not absolutely at not, I'm not surprised at all that Diego didn't not, didn't do as great of a match tonight like he did against Rafa. Against Rafa, he, he was man. He was he was firing that ball. He did only uh, 17 unforced errors, I believe, against uh, Rafael Nadal last night and fired 31 winners. That is a lot of winners. Diego didn't do as much of winners tonight. He did only 25 winners tonight against Diego Sh uh, against uh, Denis Shapovalov and, uh, and did 27 unforced errors. So he didn't do tremendous of many unforced errors in a three set, in three sets match because it was three sets tonight. Against Rafa, it was two sets. So it, of course, so it is pretty good from Diego to not do m more than 27 unforced errors to, to, th to, to considering that the match was three sets and the match was three hours and 15 minutes. So, but Diego didn't do as, a gr as good of a match tonight as he did against Rafa. But the, the opponent was different. Not that, not that Dennis is a better clay court player than Rafa Nadal. Of course, he, he isn't. But Dennis, he takes it more to, to Diego. He hits, his flat, he, he, he hits his shots flatter. He doesn't have topspin like Rafa has. So Diego will never have the time like he had against Rafa Nadal. So I knew that Diego, this will be a difficult match for Diego. And I actually said in my previous yesterday that Diego will win in, in a three-set three match. He will win the match in three sets, which he did, and I was lucky with that with that prediction of the, because this match could have gone either way. Man, it was so close! It was so damn close. Dennis, he will he will be satisfied with his performance. Absolutely, he will uh, he. Uh, in, not only in this match, but in, in the entire this week in Rome and the previous weeks before in the United States. But I truly believe that Dennis will, will not get any good sleep for one or two nights. Because he should have won this match. He should have won this match. Man, he was the better player, I feel, in that third set. He was dictating the, he, he was dictating the, the rallies. He, he was going for his shots. He, would do, he was doing a lot of winners. He was... Hitting through Diego, and it is not easy to hit through Diego, especially night in night matches in these heavy conditions. We saw how how much troubles Rafa had in yesterday's match hitting through Diego in these heavy conditions. And even Rafa himself admitted, he said, in these heavy conditions, I had re really difficult to push him back. And Shapovalov had 
also troubles to hit through uh, Diego, but he hit, but he was more successful hitting through Diego than Rafa. Shapovalov, like I said, he did 49 winners. That is a lot of winners, man. That is insane. That is, and he did 10 aces. Man, you have to be impressed from Diego. He doesn't have any serve, for God's sake. He doesn't have any serve. He's so bloody good from the baseline. He's he n almost never misses, but considering that he doesn't have any serve and to be this successful, uh, he, he has not been really great successful during his career. I believe he has won only three tournaments during his career. If he had a better serve, he would have, had, he would have won much more tournaments than he has won Diego Schwarzman because he has that great backhand. He has a solid forehand. He, has, he moves, he's lighting fast. But uh, his serve, he'll, his biggest weakness is his serve. And because he, he's not a tall guy, he really, he's really, really short. So Diego landed 69% first serves in. That is a high number. But he only won 66%, 56% behind those first serves. Because he doesn't have any powerful serve. Every time he was serving, he, it was a rally. He, he, he never got any free points, especially not in the third set. He was... He was fighting for every service games to hold his serve, Diego Schwartzman, especially on the second and the third set. In the first set, he was holding a little more easier. All in all, they break each other's serve six times each. Uh, so Diego Schwartzman has a really bad serve. So considering that Chapo has a much better serve than Diego, he should, have, he should come through this match. He really should. But... Uh, just a couple of points here and there decided the match. Uh, Diego Schwarzman, Diego Schwarzman won, won 54 percent behind the second serve. That is that is pretty good number to win for 54 percent behind the second serve. But that that is all j just depending on the rallies, guys. Chapo he landed 44 percent first serve in. That is a little too low. He needs to be over 60. Uh, uh, because he he has he's a big guy. He's not a tall guy. He's not a short guy. So he really should land more first serves in. And he was winning 66% first serves behind those first serves. So Shapo was winning as much as much of behind his first serves as Diego. 66 percent, 50, 56. I'm sorry. Diego won only 56% behind his first serve and Shapo won 66%. Why? Even though that Shapo was landing much less first serves, 54%, and Diego was landing 69%, Diego, uh, Shapo was winning more behind his first serves, 66% versus Diego's 56%. Uh, 56%. Why? Because Shapo has, has a much more powerful First serve than Diego Schwarzman. We all know that. Shapo was winning 43% behind his second serve. So uh, less than Diego. Diego was win winning 54. All in all, it was a really close fight, this one. In the end of the... In total, Diego won 113 points and Shapo won 112 points. So Diego wins only one more point than Denis Shapovalov. But big congrats to Diego Schwarzman for playing his first ever Moss 2000 final uh, because Dennis has played one earlier in his career last year in Paris when he lost to uh, Novak Djokovic in that, in, uh, uh, in that indoor tournament in Paris last year, 2019. So now Diego Schwarzman is playing his first ever Moss 2000 final against the same opponent as Dennis played his first ever last year. Now, of, of the same player is Novak Djokovic. And Novak, he, he, was, he looked really good earlier to, today in his match against Kasper Ruud. Like I said, he would win in straight sets, even though that Kasper Ruud actually had two set points in that 5-4 game in the first set. So he really had Novak under the ropes there. But like always, Novak is so clutch in big moments. He never does mistakes when he has the knife under his throat. He will play really, really consistent tennis he will just sh he will send the message to you and, send, and say to you look guy look my friend you are one set point away but i will not give the point of, for, to you for free you have to earn it i will not do an unforced error if you if you expect an unforced error from me just forget it De uh, Jack Djokovic does always this to his, to his opponent just ask Federer he has done it to Federer several times oh, 
most recently in Wimbledon last year in that heartbreaking Wimbledon loss to me as a Roger Federer fan. So Djokovic does this to everyone, guys, and he did it to Kasper Ruud as well in that first set. Kasper Ruud had, had his chances to win that first set, but he didn't take it. Guys, when you face these big giants, when they give you the little finger, you have to take it, because if you don't do it, he will eat you like a breakfast in the next in the next point or, or in the next game or in the next set. And it was exactly what Djokovic did. He won the, the first set, then he won the second set as well. Uh, uh, Djokovic was really, really solid, especially the second set. Man, that, that backhand. Have we ever seen a better backhand than Novak Djokovic ever? Have we ever seen? Can, we te can you mention a player, not only for at the current moment, but in the entire history. Have we ever seen a tennis player with a better backhand than Novak Djokovic? Man, that backhand, he can hit it with his eyes closed, really. Man, he fired so many winners with that backhand in the, against Kasper Ruud, especially in that second set. I believe Djokovic did, in the entire match, 37 winners against Kasper Ruud, and 15 winners with his forehand, 10 winners with his backhand, and 12 aces. And he was serving really good, Djokovic. 12 aces to do it to do 12 aces on clay that is impressive that is impressive guys so uh, Djokovic like I said Djokovic's worst match was in that quarterfinal against Nick Dominic Koffer he will not do that that bad of a match again he will not do he will not and he didn't maybe he will do that in French Open you never know what will happen but not in Rome not Djokovic, when it comes to big matches, semifinals and finals, if you, will, if you want to take Djokovic down, do it early in the tournament, in the third or fourth round. Because when it comes to semifinals and finals, he will peak. He will do his best matches deep in the tournaments. He, he, he will not do his best matches early in the tournament. No, he will do his best matches deep in the tournament, like semifinals and finals. He, he was really, really... He did only 19 Anfosteros against Kasper Ruud. And fired 37 winners. That is bloody impressive. Kasper Ruud is not a bad player. Yeah, we know he's not top 10 or top 20. I believe he's 34th in the world, Kasper Ruud. But he loves playing on clay. He, he really loves playing on clay. And, he, and he's, really dangerous. he's a really dangerous player on clay, Kasper Ruud. And, he, and like I said, he had two set points in the, first, in the first set. He had two set points. But of course, like many times before, Djokovic comes with the goods. Djokovic is a clutch monster. So now we'll, we will get a Rome Master 1000 final in 2020 between Novak Djokovic, the world number one, versus Diego Schwartzman, the world number 15. I believe they played each other four times. The head-to-head -head is for love to Novak Djokovic. Diego was never defeated. Novak Djokovic in four previous meetings. I, I, I actually, I actually, uh, they, they have actually faced each other three times in slams. One time in US Open, one time in French Open, and one time in Astral Open. Most recently in Astral Open early this year in the fourth round where Djokovic won in straight sets. And two times on clay actually. First time they faced each other on clay was in 2017 in French Open where Djokovic won actually a, a, a tough uh, five-set battle. I believe that Diego was up in the lead 2-1 and Djokovic, of course, came back and won the match in five sets. The fourth set and the fifth set, I believe Djokovic won 6-1, 6-1, if I remember correctly, in that 2017 meeting in French Open. And the second meeting that they have played on clay was actually last year in this tournament in Rome in the semifinals. That was also a close battle, a three-set battle where Djokovic won in three sets. So obviously Diego Schwartzman pushes Novak Djokovic on clay. Diego Schwartzman's best surface is clay. Novak, Novak Djokovic's worst surface is clay. So this should be a close fight in the final, I believe. And Diego is... He's done his best week in his entire life this week in Rome. He's playing his first ever Most 2000 final. He has not, he has not looked good pre, before this Rome week. He has not. He was upset. He was knocked out in the first round in the US Open. 
But here on clay, here on Rome, he has really found his range. He took out Rafa Nadal when he did his best performance in his life, especially in that first set. I've never seen Diego Schwartzman play a better first set like he did against Rafa Nadal. He did a great match in these semifinals as well in, against Denis Shapovalov. He played against an opponent who is probably in the shape of his life, Denis Shapovalov. Guys, to be quite honest, I have never seen Denis Shapovalov as good as he is today, at current moment. Denis Shapovalov used to do a lot of unforced errors before. Yeah, he did a lot of unforced errors in tonight's match against, against Diego as well, 58. But he did 49 winners, so he did only 9 more unforced errors than winners. Only 9, guys. So, but in the past, he used to do 20 or 25 or 30 more unforced errors than winners. That is not the case anymore. He has improved his returns. His backhand is so solid, man. He's, he, he doesn't do a lot of unforced errors with his backhand, Denis Shapovalov. He's so good from the baseline. He was challenging Diego Schwartzman from the baseline. And sometimes he was wearing him down. The nerves. The, the big, what was the big difference between Diego and, and Dennis in this match? I believe it was the nerves. Because Dennis was maybe the better player. Maybe. Like I said, Diego won, won only one more point than, than Chapo. Only one more point. So, and Chapo had this chance when he was serving for the match in that fourth, in that four or five game in the third set. But he didn't, the nerves, just the pressure, just the big moment just cut, cut into his skin and he, he just couldn't uh, deliver in the big moments, Diego, uh, Denis Shapovalov. So, Diego is coming into this final with great confidence, guys. He defeated Rafa Nadal. The greatest clicker player of all time for the first ever time in his career and his 10th attempt. Obviously, nobody beats Diego Schwartzman 10 times in a row. <laughs> so, will he have a chance against Novak Djokovic? Who is looking good, guys. He's really looking superior, to be quite honest, besides in that quarterfinal match. And, the, and Novak Djokovic has not lost one single match in this 2020 season. I am not counting that match against PCB in that, in that fourth round in US Open because he didn't lose a normal tennis player. He was a normal tennis match. He was defaulted. He was defaulted, guys. So he would never have lost against PCB if he wasn't defaulted, in my opinion. So... In a normal circ circumstances, Novak Djokovic has not lost one single tennis match so far in 2020 season this year. Will Diego Schwarzman give him his first loss in this 2020 season? <sighs> Guys, Diego Schwarzman played a brutal long match against Denis Shapovalov. Three hours and 15 minutes. He played... Two hours match against Rafa Nadal yesterday. I know that Diego Schwartzman is a really strong athlete. You, you don't see him very often tired on a tennis court. But he's not a strong athlete as Djokovic or as Thiem. Or, or as Thiem. He's not as, in my opinion, not as physical strong as those two. That is one factor that will play on in tomorrow's final. The other factor is, he doesn't have any serve. Diego Schwarzman doesn't have any serve, guys. He has the worst serve, probably in the top 50. For sure, top 40. I don't know a player who has a worse serve than Diego Schwarzman. Do you know? On the top 50. I mean the top 50. Because players outside top 100, of course, they have a worse serve than him. But in the top 50 in the world ranking, I don't know if we have a player who has a worse serve than him. He didn't do one single ace against Rafa Nadal. He didn't do one single ace against Denis Shapovalov. And, and it is not only about the aces. He doesn't have any powerful serve. He landed 69% first serves in against Denis. It is, it is a really good high percent of, pr percentage of first serves in. But it's not, he doesn't get any free points because he has a slow serve. He doesn't have a good serve. He won only 56% behind his first serves. Only 56%, even though he was landing so much high percentage of first serves in. And Dennis breaked his, his serve six times. So if Dennis can break Diego's serve six times, just imagine what Djokovic will do. Djokovic will break Diego's serve many times. For sure, four, five or six times. For sure. 
I'm, con I'm totally convinced about that. Maybe even more than six times. Diego's only chance to take Novak Djokovic down is just to wear him down from baseline. Like he wear Rafael Nadal down and like he barely, barely also wear Denis Shapovalov down. <sighs> when in that third tiebreak, Denis Shapovalov just couldn't hold his game together and he did some crucial errors. Uh, when uh, when uh, Diego won that third tiebreak 7-4. And Diego weird Nafradal down in the semis, Diego weird Denis Shapovalov, Shapovalov down. I'm, I'm sorry, Diego weird Rafael down in the quarters and Diego weird Denis Shapovalov down in the semis. Now, will he also wear Novak Djokovic down in the finals? Guys, to be quite honest with you, no. I don't think so. I just, I picked Diego to beat Denis I picked, and he proved, me, and I was right about that. I picked uh, Rafa to defeat uh, to to defeat Diego in the quarters. Diego proved me wrong in the in the quarters there, and now I'm going in the finals again against Diego. I was favoring Diego in the semis. Now I'm turning him him. I'm turning my back against him in the final, just because Djokovic is just bad. He's just too good. He is a complete tennis player. He has the serve. His serve is underrated. Oh man, he, his serve doesn't get enough credit. 12 aces against Casper Ruud. That is impressive. 37 winners. He has the backhand. Man, he's backhand down the line. This is the greatest backhand of all time. He has the returns. What will Diego to beat Djokovic? Man, you have to have a powerful serve. Because he's the greatest re serve returner of all time. You need to have three points. You just need it. You, you cannot let Djokovic take his teeth into your service games all the time. Like Diego will do in the finals. Because his serve is so bad. Uh, so Diego Schwarzman's biggest strength is the baseline. He doesn't miss a lot. Diego Schwarzman's biggest wep weapons is his... He is his feet, his legs. You, you cannot hit through him easy. But the match will be not a night session. It will be on the afternoon. So Djokovic will have easier time hitting through him what Nadal had in heavy conditions and what Dennis had in heavy conditions. But all in all, Djokovic is just a much better player than Diego Schwarzman, for God's sakes. He just is. We, we, we just look at the, uh, Djokovic as a player and look at Diego Schwarzman as a player. Djokovic has tremendous good returns. Djokovic has tremendous good backhand. Djokovic has a really good serve. So, I don't know. It is nothing that Diego does that Djokovic doesn't do better. The only thing, the only thing that I can see Diego winning this match is if he plays as good as he did against R Rafa in the quarters uh, with, with five unforced arrows like he had against Rafa Nadal in that first set. That is the only way. If he can play that kind of tennis for two sets. And his chance is to win the match in two sets. Because if the match goes to a third set, we all know that Djokovic is the decider set machine. He's the, he's the decider set terminator. You don't defeat Djokovic in a decider set. You just don't do it. At least not often. He wins 9 out of 10 matches when it, is, when it comes to a decider set. He really does. Both in 3 sets matches and in 5 sets matches. To have a chance against Djokovic, you have to take him out in straight sets. In straight sets, in 3 sets matches, and in 3 or, in three or 4 sets in 5 sets matches. That is the only way I can see Diego Schwarzman defeating Novak Djokovic if he plays as good as he did in that first set against Rafael Nadal. But Djokovic is not Rafa Nadal. He will not give Diego Schwarzman as much time as Rafa did. Jo uh, Djokovic will play closer to the baseline. Djokovic will, has flatter shots than Rafa Nadal. So Djokovic will not give time as much as Rafa did. Exactly like Diego Schwart Exactly like Shapo didn't do it as well. Because Shapo's, Shapo's ground strokes are, are also flatter than Rafa's. And, as well, and Djokovic's shots are also much flatter than Rafa's as, as well. So Diego will not have as much time as he had against Rafa Nadal. Absolutely not. So, I believe that Djokovic will be the winner. That is my, that is my prediction, guys, for this 
2020 Rome Most 2000 final. I believe that Djokovic will win this match in straight sets, guys. Probably in two close sets. Because uh, even though that Diego has pushed Novak Djokovic really hard on both of those two encounters that they have uh, that they have had on clay, but I believe that Diego man he played three hours and fifty minutes. Those legs will be tired tomorrow. They will be tired. He will not. He will give Novak. Uh, Run for his money. He will maybe take one set. Maybe. I'm doubtful about that. Maybe. But my feeling is that it will most likely be a straight sets victory for, for Novak Djokovic. And I believe Novak Djokovic will win his 36,000 most of thousand title and be the leader there because at the current moment they are they are at 35 each with Rafa Nadal. So I believe that Novak Djokovic he will lift that trophy in tomorrow in tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's final versus Diego Schwarzman. All right, guys, I'm sorry for this long video, but I just needed to talk because after this long, brutal drama of a match with, between Diego and Shapo, I just needed to let out my emotions. I'm sorry for that. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care and bye-bye.